You're watching Drink This Tonight, and tonight we're starting a new series on exotic cocktails, beginning with the classic Mai Tai. Now you can't make a great Mai Tai without great rum. The original 1944 Mai Tai was made with 17-year Ray and Nephew rum. Now unfortunately, they don't make that rum anymore. So for this episode, I thought it would be fun to experiment to try and recreate the 17-year-old Ray and Nephew as closely as possible. Now I've seen a bunch of YouTubers experiment with ultrasound to try and rapidly age spirits. I haven't seen anybody try it with rum though. If you guys have any experience with that, let me know down in the comments. But I went on Amazon and I found an inexpensive ultrasonic jewelry cleaner. The way it works is you take the rum and you take wood chips and you combine them in the jewelry cleaner. Now the ultrasound is going to create microscopic bubbles in the rum that agitate the surface of the wood chips and impart the characteristics of aging in minutes. Now this is compared to when you would age rum in a barrel where it could take years or even decades to achieve the same result. So I thought we could try that. I have two different kinds of wood chips. I have bourbon barrel wood chips, which came from bourbon barrels. They chop them up and they package them for home use. Rum is often aged in bourbon casks, so I figured it would be a good choice for this experiment. The company seems to have packaged them with whiskey in the package though, it's, so they're actually wet and there's a very strong aroma of whiskey. Now I like that, but I don't want it to be too forward in the flavor profile of the finished product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put them in the oven at low heat for a short amount of time to evaporate off as much of that excess whiskey as possible. I also have some wine barrel chips, which came from red wine barrels. It's less traditional to age rum in wine barrels, but there are some really, really nice rums that are aged in wine casks, so I wanted to see if I could replicate that. So we're gonna try both, and then we'll compare the finished products. All right, so I've taken these out of the oven and let them cool a little bit. You can see that they're much lighter in color now, and they're, they're totally dry. Uh, they smell really good, actually. Still a little bit of the residual bourbon flavor, uh, but yeah, I think these are perfect. So now I'm gonna add the rum. All right, that's about 300 milliliters there. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this in. There's a max fill line on the machine. I can't go above that. So I've added the wood chips. Uh, it's starting to take on a little bit of color, but not much. We're turning it on now. There we go. Making some sound. Cat doesn't like it. <laughs> He's running away now. Um, so yeah, we'll let that go for 30 minutes and we'll, we'll check back with you after 30 minutes. So it's been 30 minutes. We had a couple mishaps with the machine where it shuts off automatically after three minutes. And then after three cycles or so of that, it stops all together. And I guess there's some kind of built-in cool down in case the machine overheats. So I don't know if I would recommend using this particular jewelry cleaner, but we just kept resetting it and eventually we got to 30 minutes. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and see how it looks. Wow, so that really has taken on a lot of color. Now it's not as dark as I probably would have expected it to be, but considering that it was completely clear and colorless 30 minutes ago, that's pretty good. And it smells incredible. Like it, it still smells like Ray and Nephew. It didn't take away any of that characteristic funk. Um, it smells very good. I don't necessarily pick up any aroma of oak, but uh, we'll see how it tastes when we try it. I just, I just wanted to get a shot of the color there. You can see it's, it's, not, um, it's not dark, but it's, you know, it's got some color. I would call it like an amber um, or like a light, light brown. Uh, it looks pretty good. We'll see how it tastes. All right, so there you have it. I have all of these rums here to try by comparison, starting with the unaged original Ray and Nephew. Um, then I have the bourbon barrel aged rum. It took on a little bit of color, not as much as I was expecting to, but it definitely got dark. Um, then next we have the wine barrel aged rum. Now this one took on some color as well, but it, it's not as dark as the bourbon barrel. Um, I don't know if it's because the chips, uh, the, these wood chips are a little bit darker in color. They're also smaller. As you can see, like the wine barrel chips, some of them are pretty big. They're not all this big but I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Um, smaller chips are gonna give you greater surface area, um, but those both did it, uh, take on a significant amount of color. And then last but not least, I have some Appleton Estate 12 year. Um, this is their rare blend, I guess. 
um, which I tried yesterday and it's delicious. But I have that for comparison as well because it is made by the same company. Um, now, I'm assuming that the starting uh, ingredients are different in the blend, so I'm not expecting it to be exactly the same, but it's just a comparison for an aged rum by the same producer. So without further ado, I really would like to go ahead and try it. Um, I'm going to start with the Ray Nephew. I'm expecting it to be a little harsh because it is, I don't know, what is it, 60% ABV? 63%. It is an overproof rum, so it's going to be uh, hot, but let's give it a try. So the nose is funky and fruity, um, rotting banana, tropical fruits, pretty much what you'd expect from Ray and Nephew. On the palate, it is fairly bright, um, a little bit of caramel and molasses even. I know it's not aged, but I am picking some of that up. Uh, it's about what I expect. Very good. Let's move on to the bourbon barrel aged. I'm really excited to try this. Okay, so immediately on the nose, it's definitely a lot more mellow. I'm not getting that really um, astringent uh, aroma that you get from the unaged variety. Not a ton of oak, but it, it's definitely more mellow. I, I'm, I can pick that up for sure. Holy smokes, that is so good. And I'm not making this up. Guys, that really changes it. Just 30 minutes on that little machine with these wood chips totally changes the character. It rounds it out, it mellows it, it's soft, it's mild, warm vanilla, baking spices, all of that coming from the oak. Now, I really like this rum. I would drink this on its own. Maybe not at 63% ABV, can stand to be watered down a little bit, but that is really nice. The bourbon is not overpowering. Um, it, it's just a really nice, well-rounded Jamaican aged rum. Yeah, got that pot still characteristic, but without being overpoweringly funky, um, and it, it's something that I could sip. Wine barrel aged. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are some rums out there that are aged in wine casks, and they are terrific. You can kind of pick up a little bit of that, uh, that wine still. And if you look at these chips, some of them are stained red. Clearly, they were on the inside of the barrel. So it is the real deal. Let's try it. Okay, so on the nose, um, I think a little bit more of the fruity ester components come through. That's for sure. Uh, definitely more so than the bourbon barrel aged, but it's a lot more soft and mild than the unaged type. Ooh. That's really good in its own way as well. Um, I, it's hard to describe. I get more of the, um, more baking spices than I did from this one. Maybe even some, um, like some red cherry uh, like dark fruit notes as well on the palate. Um, it's a different, it's a different characteristic for sure. Uh, but yeah, even though the color isn't quite there, it definitely tastes like a, at least lightly aged rum. So I'm very satisfied with the results of both of these. Uh, absolutely uh, would recommend. And then last but not least, I'm going to go on to the Appleton Reserve blend, uh, 12 years. So this is the real deal. Uh, there's obviously no substitute for actual aging in an oak cask. Um, no way about it. It's, it's not just something you can replicate uh, in 30 minutes in a little thing uh, that you can buy off Amazon. Uh, these guys put a lot of work and time and effort into making a great rum. So let's try it. Okay, this has some notes of honey. Um, Again, a lot of the, the fruity ester components that you would expect to find in a pot still Jamaican rum. But yeah, mild for sure. It's got kind of a, uh, again, more of the fruit, um, but it's definitely pretty well-rounded. Ah, and that's got like a, a toffee finish to it. A little chocolatey, velvety, nice rich mouth feel. Uh, nice full body. This is a fantastic rum. And I, I think I do prefer it to both of these as a sipping rum, for sure. 
Uh, maybe with a little bit more time with the wood chips, these would soften out a little bit, but hands down, this is a great rum. So what did we learn today? I think we learned that you can absolutely take a white unaged rum, put it in an ultrasonic cleaning machine for just 30 minutes or maybe longer uh, and achieve a fantastic rum that you can sip or you could use in a cocktail. And as far as replicating the 17 year old Ray and nephew rum for a Mai Tai, I don't know if this quite gets us there. It's good, but and it does taste age, but it's not like a 17 year aged rum. Um, I might try off camera aging it longer to see what happens. I don't think it's a great substitute, um, but hey, the beautiful thing about a Mai Tai is you can use any rum that you want and you can make it any way that you want with whatever flavor components and combinations are most pleasing to you. Um, so, you can try it as many ways as you want. I'm going to try it with both of these rums and see how it turns out. Uh, but for that, you'll have to stay tuned for another episode of Drink This Tonight. Bye, everybody.